Auschwitz II, known as Birkenau, was built mainly for the extermination of Jews. By the middle of 1943, it had four large gas chambers and crematoria capable of killing 12,000 people every day. When they opened the door of the cattle wagons, you could see the platform was full of SS with dogs and whips in their hand and all that, and this shouting raus in this terrible guttural voice. And as a soldier came along with a club in his hands, he separated the women from the man, and there goes my wife. My baby, and we were told you see your families every Sunday, every weekend. That wasn't true, never happened. And we were ordered to walk, and we walk through the arch. We had entered Birkenau camp. And a few minutes later, I'm looking to my right, I see on my right a truck coming towards us and stops in front of us, and the truck is full of women and children. And there's my wife with the baby in her arm. I shout out to her, she didn't hear me. Then the truck moves away. In 1943, the Allies had learned of the existence of Auschwitz itself through the decryption of Nazi transport and police codes. But analysts believed it to be nothing more than a slave labor camp and that the high mortality rates recorded in the German ciphers were due to exhaustion and disease. For the Allies, there was a great deal of information. Some of it came, of course, from the secret ultra decrypts. But it was actually very difficult to take all these bits of evidence, some of them very partial, some of them just a you know, little snippet here and there. They knew what a murderous war was being conducted, but actually putting it all together into what we now call the Holocaust was, I think, something extremely difficult to do. Some of the people who came there with their wives and with their children, they're asking, where's our family, where's our wives, where's the children that we had? They said, forget about it. you will never see them again. And can you, can you smell something in the air? This is, they're burning the flesh of your people, the old prisoners telling us. I said, we didn't believe what they were saying. Who ever heard of gas, gassing people and burning them? Whoever would dream of it, a cultured people, the Germans, musicians, authors, it's incredible. I mean, nobody can do that. And I still didn't believe that they were killing people. I still didn't believe that they were guessing people because I believe my wife and child was alive. In July 1944, Two reports written by Auschwitz escapees were delivered to the Allied governments in London and Washington. One account was by a prisoner who had witnessed at first hand the arrival of trains bringing deportees from all over Europe to Auschwitz. The number of the transports tallied with the official decrypted information. He also delivered detailed plans of the layout of the camp, 
including sketches of the gas chambers and crematoria. The evidence of mass murder seemed irrefutable. The second report warned of an escalation in the killing. The Nazis had begun the mass deportation of the last Jewish community still untouched by the Holocaust. The three quarters of a million Jews in Nazi-occupied Hungary. Somehow, rumors reached us and we just couldn't believe it. We thought they were exaggerating. And we were talking about it, what we are going to do after the war, because we were the only Jewish unit still in Europe that hadn't been deported. And we thought we had escaped the fate of all the others. By the summer of 1944, by the time of the massive deportations of Jews from Hungary to Auschwitz, a huge amount of information had reached British military intelligence and the British government about Auschwitz, about Auschwitz. They knew that tens of thousands, in fact hundreds of thousands of people, had been murdered there. So by the time of the deportations of Jews from Hungary, the British government knew that Auschwitz was a place of mass murder. And when the trains rolled towards Auschwitz, alarm bells should have rung in Whitehall. Throughout this period of intense killing at Auschwitz, the Allies were able to bomb military and industrial targets in Poland from captured airfields in southern Italy. Paving the way for the bombers were the aerial reconnaissance units. One of their missions was to photograph a new Nazi factory, the IG Farben synthetic oil and rubber plant near a town called Monowitz. From 15,000 feet, photographs were taken for several kilometers over the factory site. On return, the photographs were examined by interpreters. They studied the factory and oil installations in minute detail recording the key areas of the plant's operation. But what the interpreters failed to identify were the rows upon rows of huts in a camp nearby. They failed to identify the gas chambers and the crematoria. No analysis or intelligence commentary was made on the photographs of the death camp. We have to remember that for photo reconnaissance during the war, that there were thousands and thousands of images being brought in every day. And for those whose task it was to look at the Ige Farben plant of Monovitz, which they wanted to bomb, that was what they focused on. They may have seen some of the surrounding camps and thought they were simply labor camps, like thousands of labor camps over the rest of uh, Germany and Central Europe. And so the terrible tragedy is that, that, that they had the camp, in a sense, in their sights, but they didn't realize what they were looking at. Enhanced by modern digital technology, these aerial photographs, taken in August 1944, reveal Nazi preparations for the mass deportations from Hungary. The SS built a new railway spur which would carry the deportees directly to the crematorium.